and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to take on a puzzle that only came into us very recently. It's been sent in by Zetamath, and Mark tested it yesterday, and Mark is raving about this puzzle. He says it's absolutely incredible. Um, I took the liberty of looking at uh, the page it's been released on on Logic Masters Germany, and indeed, it's got a 100% rating, and some of the comments are quite extraordinary. There was one that said, this is the single greatest Sudoku construction I have seen in many months, or something along those lines. So this one, this is going to be an interesting one. It's called Nabna which is a reversal of Renban. So there's obviously something going on to do with consecutive digits. I'll read you the rules in just a second. Before I do that, there is a whole stack of stuff going on around the channel at the moment. Um, on Patreon, we have Jovial's Sudoku Extravaganza, which we've had, I think, well over 500 correct solutions for. That's 20 puzzles, all, all, all at a, an approachable standard going through all of the standard Sudoku variants. So, you know, there's an anti-night puzzle, there's a killer Sudoku, there's a thermo Sudoku, there's a arrow Sudoku, etc. That is well worth your, your time. And also yesterday, uh, because we reached the incredible total of 5,000 patrons, thank you so much if you're one of them, uh, we have released free on Patreon this murder mystery Sudoku hunt, and we have already received some correct solutions to that as well. And those people who've sent in answers are raving about this. It is an absolutely magnificent experience. It's, there's a real story to go along with the puzzles. There are lots of puzzles and they are very high quality and they're approachable as well. So many, many thanks to Alice, No Feet McGee, uh, James Maverick, I think, submitted a puzzle for that. Scott Strosal, I'm going to miss some of the important names. And I think Eva Kucha, who came up with the story. Anyway, the whole thing is just well worth well worth your time. And I definitely recommend you take a look. Other than that, we've got Shai's setting video on uh, how she created Valtari. That came out on the channel a couple of days ago and has been getting rave reviews. I'm going to be releasing a setting video by Glipperal. That'll probably be next week, though. Um, Mark and I have been interviewed on various podcasts over the last few days. Keep an eye on our Twitter if you like listening to those. Uh, I normally tweet about those and the Twitter handle is at Cryptic Cracking. So with all that said, let's get on with this one and let's read the rules. They are normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a white dot contain consecutive digits. Okay, normal crop key then. Cells separated by a black dot contain digits with the ratio of one to two. There aren't very many Kropke dots in this puzzle. Not all possible dots are given. Okay, well, that means it's absolutely fine, for example, for those two squares to have a one to two ratio or to be consecutive. Um, but just because there's no white or black dot doesn't mean that they, uh, they can't be uh, those things. Now, here's the interesting bit, I think, about these purple lines. Each purple line cannot contain a repeated digit, nor can it contain any consecutive digits e.g. if a line has a 3 anywhere on it then neither 2 nor 4 can appear on that line right okay so these lines are uh, and this is why the title is Nabna because it's a reversal of red line basically these are the opposite of Renban lines so let's just think about this if there's a 3 on this line because the digits consecutive with three would be two and four. You cannot put two or four anywhere on the line. So if this was an eight, you couldn't put nine or seven in any of those three positions. Good grief. Right. That's, I've no idea, by the way, how hard this is. Mark didn't tell me. He just said that I, he insisted I did it today because it's such a magnificent puzzle. Happy to, happy to try. Um, but anyway, do have a go. The way to play the puzzles on Cracking the Cryptic is to go down to the video description and click the link and you will go to a screen that looks identical to my screen and you can play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And the first thing I was just scanning for there was a five cell line because it does occur to me that's not five cells, is it? Ah. A five cell line would have to contain one, three, five, seven, and nine because it couldn't contain consecutive digits. But it doesn't actually look like there are any five cell lines. So there are loads of four cell lines though. There are really a lot. So for a four cell line, 
That's weird. You don't really know very much about it. Unless you can lock a digit off a four cell. Ah, you can lock a nine off this four cell line. Right, okay, let's think about that. So there is no four, no nine on this four cell line by virtue of Sudoku, which means that these four cells are selected from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight in such a way that no two of them are consecutive. So it could be one, three, seven, nine, but it could also, one, three, seven, nine, what did I say? No, one, three, five, seven, it could be, but it could also be one, three, five, eight, or it could be two, four, six, eight. Or it could be one, four, six, oh, there's just loads of possibilities. Ah! So maybe it's the black crop key dot. I don't think you can do anything with these lines. Without knowing something about them, I don't think you can do anything with them. So I think we're going to have to use... Ah, no, no, no. No, it's not the black crop key dot, is it? It's the white crop key dot. Because... Hang on, these two digits are consecutive, and so they can't appear on the same purple line. That feels like it's massively important. Hang on, let me just think about this. So, whatever this square is, can't go on the same line as whatever that cell is. This cell in box two has to be on that Remband line. Let's color that one in just to, just let me look at this for a second. So this cell, if we look at box two, it can't go on its own Nebna line <laughs> uh, and it can't go in its own column. So it is on that line. So this digit, whatever that digit is, now can't go on that line because if it if it did go on that line, it would be consecutive with its with the, with the blue one because of the crop key dot. So this one can't go. Oh, it can only go here. Oh, that is so strange. I cannot tell you. That is just ridiculous. So let's just think about where green goes in box two. It can't go on this line because that line already has a blue on it and we know that green is consecutive with blue so it's so green is not on those two squares green is not in those two squares because it can't repeat on its own nebna line and green is not in those squares because they are blue or there's a blue on one of them and green is consecutive with it so <laughs> green can only go there that is quite extraordinary um now now blue can't go on that line. Oh, I've got tears in my eyes. That is ridiculous. Um, hang on a minute. So green, I don't know whether I'm meant to look at green or blue in this box, but I'm going to look at green because I've just noticed that green is on this line and it was so helpful that blue was on this one that we're going to think about this now. So now in this box, blue is not on this line. This is just stupendous. <laughs> this is just stupendous. That's blue in the corner. <laughs> That's blue in the spotlight. Losing its religion because... Because green is on all of these Nebna lines that reach into box three. And if green is on the Nebna lines, you can't put blue on the Nebna lines or you will be putting consecutive digits on the Nebna lines. So I think blue goes there, which means blue is not here, which means blue is vertical, which means blue is down here. Now we know green is not on this line because blue is on it and green is not in those squares. So green is in one of those squares, which means green, green isn't here because if green was here, it would be on a Nebna line. Well, in fact, it would see itself in the same row. So green is in one of those two squares. And long may this continue, for, because this is, this is just stunning. <laughs>
It is stunning. Um, now, blue. P blue, perhaps, in this box. Blue. So, blue is in one of four places, I think. Um... If we knew blue was on the black Kropke dot, at least we could limit its digits slightly. But I don't see why blue can't be in those squares immediately. It would put blue in one of those. If blue was on the black Kropke dot, blue would be in one of these. I mean, it's still ridiculous that this puzzle solves from here, actually. Even though I feel incredibly proud to know that these two digits are the same and those two digits are the same. How on earth is this puzzle going to actually resolve itself? There's something about this I've not understood. There is definitely something about this I have not understood. Because there's not enough information here. Surely. Um, no, I'm not going to go into the raven again. Surely, <laughs> said I. Surely that is something at my window lattice. Um... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, green, there's not really very many Nebna, Nabna lines in box one. Blue, ah, maybe blue and green in this box. So blue and green are not here. And blue and green have to be on different Nabna lines in this box. And I don't think this is, I don't think this is doing quite enough. Sorry. Um, ah. Um. I'm now wondering whether I can actually deduce anything about these squares. So, green, oh yeah, I can, right, here we go, here we go. This is just stunning. This is so clever, I cannot tell you. What I think we have to do is to look at box three, because I focused in on blue in box three, and that was sensible-ish, but it wasn't enough, was it? Because the other sensible question to ask is where, where any other digit that's consecutive with green goes in this box. That is a very sensible question. So let's imagine that green has two consecutive digits. In fact, let's imagine it's three. If green is three, then I need to put two and four somewhere in this box. Now, bear in mind, I cannot put 2 and 4 on any Nabna line that contains a 3. So, in fact, it's impossible. I can't, this is not a Schrodinger cell. It cannot be simultaneously 2 and 4. So, what this is telling us is that in this box, or because of this box, green can only have one consecutive digit in this puzzle. Now that means that green is not an intermediate number like, like three. Green, green is one. Green has to be one or nine because it can only have one consecutive digit in this box. And that's gonna go there. Now once green is one or nine because it can only have one consecutive digit, it can't be nine because of the given. So green is one, blue is two, blue goes in the corner. Well, two goes in the corner, so that's two in the corner. And one goes here. Yeah, now I'm, yeah, now I'm not allowed to apologise anymore, but I am a bit sorry. I could have got that more quickly if I just followed through on the thinking I was doing earlier. So apologies if you've been annoyed with me about that. Um, 
Now this must be absolutely crucial, isn't it? Because because now I want to think about three. <laughs> I want to think about three in this box because three can't go on a line with a two. And now, so three is in one of those two places, which is fine because one is obviously not consecutive with three. Right, and now we ask the question, where does three go in box eight? And the answer isn't in none of those squares because of this three, and it can't go on the line with a two. So three is in one of those squares, which places, well, now I've got a one three pair in this box because three can't go on, on a Nabna line with a two. So this is a one three pair, and that's not, that's not, um, well, I can't remember what I just did. I think I just deleted a pencil mark. I don't know where it was. Um, lost my train of thought now. Ones and threes, we've now sort of learned something about. Uh, yeah, we can't do anything with threes in this box because the two, once the two is off the Nabna line, threes effectively are open season and we can put them anywhere. Now, so what do we do next? It must be something to do with ones. Is it this? Ones, twos, and threes. I know that this is not a one, two pair, but it could still be, could still be a two, four pair, I think, or a four, eight pair, or a three, six pair. And because it's sort of, it's it's not all on a, a Nabna line, it's crossing Nabna lines, we don't really get any info on the Nabna lines from this. Well, we probably do in a way I don't understand. One and two, oh, I've already looked at this. One and two over here. So, um, let's, maybe Nabna lines that cross boxes is where we should look. Nabna lines that cross boxes, that sells interesting. That cell's got to live up there and on these squares. This one is not as interesting as that one actually because this one doesn't actually, yeah, it doesn't lock things into the right positions. And these ones that are sort of two cells in one and two cells on the other don't look like they line up. That one maybe. Uh, no, 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 that's no good. This Because this Nabna line doesn't come all the way to that square, whatever's in that square can't go in five cells, but it could still go in four cells, and that's annoying. Let's have a look at this one then a bit more seriously. So whatever goes in there can't go in those squares and can't go on its Nabna line. So it must be up here because it can't be a one which means it's on those squares. This is what we, what, this is what we already knew, I think. Um, ah, yeah, okay, I see. I think I see what I have to do here. This is, <laughs> this is, this is a genius puzzle, Zeta Math. This is one of the great, great puzzles because I think I know I think I know what this digit is. Let's think about this. So the question we need to ask is a bit like the question we asked up there regarding consecutive digits but whatever red is let's make red six just for the sake of exposition we now know that the digits uh, five and seven have to appear somewhere in row five of the grid but they can't go on the Nabna line with red so they can't go in any of those squares in other words the digits that are consecutive with red are in these two positions but we already know that this one is a one or a three. So how could 
how could well how could red be two for example how could this be a one if this is a one that's telling us that red is two which it's not so this is a three once that's a three we now know that three must be consecutive with red because of the geometry of the of row five and it can't and this can't be two so red is four and there's a four up here and there's a four over here and this square must be the other digit that's that's consecutive with four so that's also known that's a five these squares are six seven eight and nine that's not nine um now let me just think hang on um so oh this is lovely isn't it so now we should ask the question where do the digits that are consecutive with four which are the digits three and five go in box six because they're not there by the power of sudoku they're not on a line that contains a four by the power of Nabna lines so they go in those two squares now if those two squares are a three five pair but that's on a black Kropke dot what can you not put on a black Kropke dot five because that digit is not able to be ten or two and a half so that's three that's six and that's five out of nowhere there's a five on that Nabna line there's no six on this Nabna line you can't put seven where does seven go in this box? Once you get a bit of traction on this, you can do it because it's such a powerful constraint. What, now seven can't go there, obviously, on, in the box. So seven goes with the four. That's a four seven pair. And hopefully we won't be left with anything that's consecutive with these four and six digits on that. That's got to be eight and two. And there's a two here, actually. Ah, so two and eight go in. That's not eight. Though, ah, these aren't seven, look, in those squares. So seven is vertical in column four. Which, ah, no, interesting. Look at row four of the grid. This Nabna line has a five on it. So it does not have a six on it. So where does the six go in row four? It's got to be in this domino. And that means that square is not a six. Um, and you've got to be a bit careful with this this line now eight looks a very difficult digit to be putting on that oh no hang on maybe that's all right eight works if you go six here I feel like there's something going on there. I can't quite figure out what it is. Uh, let's have a look at those squares. Uh, these have got to be one, four, seven, and nine. So a snooker maximum and then a nine. So there's definitely a one and a four in those squares there. And got ones and threes going on. Ah, this one has three and five on it. So these two squares are a bit restricted, look, because these can't be one, two, three, four, or five, and they can't be six because that would be consecutive with five. This is ridiculous. So these are seven, eight, and nine. And what, well, how, how can we keep these from being consecutive? They've got to be seven, nine pair. So now this column needs three, six, and eight. And oh, you can't put three on this square because the threes are over there and you can't put them next to a two on a Nabna line. So that square is a six or an eight, I think. And these are three, six or eight. Um, and actually, there's no, it doesn't seem to be any problem. Once you get a one on a Nabna line, it's not terribly helpful, is it? Because it's sort of the least constrained digit along with nine. Two has to be in one of these squares. This row still needs two, six, seven, and eight. 
Let's have a look at that. Two, six, seven, eight. So, ah, no. Okay, I was about to say that's sort of suggesting that two is here, but actually you could put six, eight on here and that would be okay. Ah, I'm getting stuck. <laughs> Not surprising, but I am getting stuck. So where do we look now? That's the question. I think there's something going on here. Let me have another think about this. If this is... I don't want to put... Oh! Yes, okay. The way to think about this is to ask whether if this is if this is not a six, the puzzle breaks. Because then you can't put eight on the line. Yeah, that's that's a good way. Look, if this is not six, so let's imagine this is an eight or a nine. What how are we going to make these three digits work? If you put eight here, this has to be seven and the Navna line's broken. So you've got to have to go nine here. But once you go nine here, this can't be eight and would have to be seven. And those two squares would be a nine, seven pair and that would be broken. So there is definitely a six here. That's the only way that's gonna work. And that means that's not a six. And more importantly than that, I think, it means this is not a seven. So that's an eight, that's a nine, that's a seven. We get rid of the seven over there. That means we can get rid of the one. Whoopsie! Can get rid of the one for uh, sort of corner pencil mark. Eight comes out of those squares. Right, and now that's that is better now because once eight's been removed, you you must have a two in this domino. Otherwise, you've got a six seven pair on the Nabna line. So there's a two here. There's no two here. Now there's a two here, so that square's not a one or a three because it would be consecutive with the two, which forces this to be a one three pair. I, I almost have the impression that Zeta Math would have been laughing when he constructed this because it's just ridiculous. Um, this Navna line's probably constrained now because that digit can't be, it can't be nine or seven or five or four or two, right? That's this. This is a very strange naked single that can only be one. I am actually going to double check that because that seems so ridiculous. So once you have a Navna line with a three, six and an eight on it, apparently, yeah, it's true, isn't it? The only digit that's not consecutive with everything that's been placed already is one. Good grief. Okay. Oh, that gets me a one over there. So one is in the same column as two in box nine. Um, I'm not sure. I definitely haven't got a very good feel for this puzzle in terms of where to look next. I'm not sure whether I should be looking at this one or this one. And probably the answer is neither. I'm going to look at this one though, because I've actually got quite a lot of given digits in this box already. So I know there's a two on this line. Um, hang on, what's the best way to think about this? I've got to place two, four. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. What you cannot do, if you look at the digits I've got left to place here, it's two, four, five, six, and eight. So the run that's difficult there is the four, five, six. So in order to avoid if you put a five on this line, that's the way to think about it. If you put a five on the line, what happens? You've got a problem because you need to put a four or a six on the line and you can't. So there's no five on the line and that means this is a five. And that means that this square, well, those two squares cannot be six anymore. So that's two, seven. This has become a six. Now that square is probably restricted by the madness that's going on. It is, it's a nine, isn't it? That is so strange. This cannot be one or three or four because one and three are consecutive with two, four is consecutive with five, as is six, seven is consecutive with eight, that is a nine. So it is true, once you get a few digits, oh, that's a four, once you get a few digits, you can actually make some progress. The nine and the seven over here are resolved. 
uh, 9 goes on the Nabna line in box 9 which means I can't put 8 on that line so 8 is now I'm definitely pencil marking that it's in one of three places these three squares are from 2, 4, 6 and 8 this column is done this column needs 2, 4 and 9 on the Nabna line and I bet you that does something to this digit um, let's think about this so this square cannot be 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 or 8 so it's 6 or 7 which I probably can do that but I can't quite see how to do it um, I have a feeling also that this puzzle is making me look like a prize Charlie and I'm sorry about that. Those squares are now known. Those squares are 3, 5 and 8. Okay, And that's fine. None of those are consecutive. I've got 2 and 9 on this nab in the line. Oh, yeah, here's a good question. Where does 8 go in that box? 8 can't go on the Nabna line with a 9, so 8 is over here, which means that squares a 6. That fixes those. Let's get rid of the corner pencil mark. Now, now these squares are known, aren't they? They've got to be 5, 6, and 7, I think. Oh, I see what's happening here. Okay, so if these are 5, 6, and 7, you can see we can't put 6 onto this line, because if we do, a 5 or a 7 will accompany it, and that will be a problem. So the 6 goes at the top. That's fine, because it's not consecutive with 2, 4, or 9. 5 and 7 go on this line. This is now a 3, 8. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a 3, 8 pair, which means we get rid of the corners. And this square is probably restricted now because it can't be one, two, three, four, five, seven or nine. So is it just six or have I just miscalculated that? I'm doing that again. This square can't be one, two, three, four, five because of this. It can be six. It can't be seven. That's consecutive with eight. It can't be nine. That is a six. So 6 is in one of those two squares at the bottom. 6 is in one of these two squares on this one. And 6 is very restricted actually in box 7 because it's on this Nabna line. 6 is actually placed in box 7 because of these 6s. That's a 6, which means that's a 6. Which means that's a this is a six, I think. I'm, I'm not sure if we haven't done all the sixes. We have done all the sixes. Good. Um, and I want to look at this Nabna line, I think, because I've got a one and a three on it already. So these two squares cannot include, well, they cannot be one, two, three, or four. And they cannot be six or nine. So the options for these squares are five, seven, and eight, I think. And we can't put seven and eight on there because they would be consecutive. So one of these squares is a five, which doesn't actually seem to do very much. Five is therefore in one of those squares. Um, and now I am very stuck. What do I do? Come on, Simon, figure it out. What else? I don't like the look of these ones all on Nabna lines up there, so I'm not really wanting to look up there. That probably means I should look up there. Um, three, four, five, seven. Three, four, five, seven. That square's just three, four, or five. That square is just 3, 4, or 7. Hmm, okay. <laughs> get rid of the corner pencil marks there in an effort to appear busy. Get rid of the corner mark. Ah, I can get rid of 2 in that square. Maybe no. 
OK. Do I know anything about this line? This line, this line can't have 9 on it. Right, OK, so this line has to have, ah, so there's a virtual triple with 7 and 8 here. Oh, it's an 8. Ah, got it. Right, this line has an 8 on it. Because what I was thinking was that you can see that it can't have a 5 on it, this line. So how many digits that are lower than 5 can we put on this line in order to make sure they're not consecutive? Well, if I'm choosing from 1, 2, 3, and 4, I can pick two of those only. I can't pick three of them. So it must have a digit higher than a 6. And that can't be a 7, because that's consecutive with 6, and it can't be a 9. So there's an 8 on this line, and that might be helpful. Actually, it might be very helpful, because that's not 8. That's not 8. I can place 8, can't I, in this box. That's the point. This is becoming an 8. And that's, you can see, by placing the 8, what I'm, the reason I'm pausing is I'm taking away the possible positions of 1s, 2s, and 5s in box 9. And I think the only position 5 has left to go in is here, which is on the Nabna line. So we get an 8. We get a 5. 5 is shifted into one of those three squares. 8 is taken out of these squares. So this becomes a 5-7 pair, which means that square is not a 7. In fact, there's a 7 now in one of those two positions in this box. So this Nabna line has a nine, oh, it has a 9 on it and a 5 on it and no 6, 7 or 8 on it. So, ah, beautiful. This is so clever. This is so clever again because, OK, I've got to pick, therefore, two digits from the digits 1, 2 th and 3. I can't have 4 on the line because it's got 5 on it. So this has got 1, 3 and 9 on it. And therefore, where does the 1 go? It's got to go here. So that's a 1. That's a 2, that's a 9, and that's a 3, and that's a 3, and that's a 1. Now there's a 1 on this Nabna line. This square now is not a 3. So this is a 4-7 pair left over in this box, which means I've got a 4-7 pair in this column, which means that square's a 3, which is fine because that is not consecutive with 1. This has become an 8. Now 8 is being shunted onto that Nabna line, which would actually pair up quite well with a 5, look. Ooh, or would it? Would that give this any value? I'm not sure it would. Hang on, if I put 8 on here, can you put 5 on this Nabna line then? I don't think so, because if you did, what would you put in this square? You couldn't put 4 because there's, you couldn't put anything. It would be broken, so there is no 5 on there. That's a 5. That's a 5. That's a 7. We've got a 2, 4, 9 triple in row 3. Um, and we can probably do some other things too, but I don't know what those things are yet. Uh, what about this row? Oh, I've got a five, seven pair, so that's a four, that's a seven. Oh, I've broken it. I've broken the puzzle. How did I manage to do that? I must have made, I must have miscalculated this five conclusion, I think. Either that or I've made a Horlix of this box somehow. That's really annoying. Let's go back to here. And let me think. Oh, how, how have I got an 8 there? Sorry, no, what I've done wrong is I've pencil marked 8s into the wrong place. So perhaps that conclusion on with a 5 and an 8 was correct. It was just complete bobbins because the 8 is in one of one of those two squares. Oh, well, that's actually quite a relief. Okay, because I do not want to butcher this puzzle. So that means I can fill these in. Now I've got a 4-8 pair at the top there. And these squares are now known. Look, So we might as well fill these in and see what the options are and see if we can do some thinking. So these squares are 5, 7, and 9. And we don't know about any of those digits. 
but we do. The geometry of the Nabna lines is important. If this was an 8, you, you'd have to have a 5 or a 7 in this domino. Otherwise, the box is broken. So that's not an 8, that's a 4. That's an 8. Now there's no 5 on this line, and hopefully it's working better now. So this is a 7, 9. That 5 is fixing some things. This four is fixing some things. That's coming back over here and fixing some more things. These squares are now three, five, and eight, which actually, all of which can work on that Nabna line. Um, now we must be able to tidy up some stuff down at the bottom. Let's check and see. So we can get rid of four from here. So this seems to be a two or an eight, which has a friend over here. Oh, I see. There's no eight there. That's the point, isn't it? So this is an eight. This is a two, four pair. This square is a two by Sudoku. Two in this box looks very difficult. No, it's not impossible. It goes in one of two places. This square. Ah, this square is a two or a four looking at the row. Well, it's not a two, so that's a four. That's a four, that's a two. These squares are now hopefully not consecutive with one another. Ones, threes, eights, beautiful. One, three, and eight, and that's not consecutive with six. One comes out of here, three, five, eight, triple in the column, which means this square can't be a five. That's a seven, this is a five, this is a seven, this is a two. So seven lives in exactly this square in box one. Um, so I, th I think this Nabna line has a lot of work to do. I hope it will be up to the task. Let's have a look along this row. We need twos, fours, and nines into these squares. Ah, so that's a naked single. That's a nine. It can't be a two or a four because of that. That fixes the nine and the one. That fixes the one in this box. And these, oh, deadly pattern. Hang on a moment. Is it resolved by the Nabna line? It is. That is so... What a lovely finish. Okay, look here. This square here, if it was a 4, you would have to put a 3 or a 5 on the Nabna line, neither of which could adjoin it. So this is a 2. That's a 4. That's a 2. That's a 4. Now you remove 3 from the Nabna line. 3 goes there. 3 goes there. 8 goes there. 5 goes here. Please work. Please work. Yeah, the three is going to be useful now. So three, eight, eight, five. Tick. Ah, oh, what a pleasure that was. Zeta math. Take a bow. What, what a construction. What an idea. And what an execution. The start is absolutely sublime. It is ridiculously clever that you use this little crop key dot to fix some digits in the grid. And the other thing that I... Um, full of admiration for is this box and the need to appreciate that basically whatever green is it only has one consecutive digit in the puzzle and that was so critical to actually breaking into the breaking in and getting the logic goodness me i hope you enjoyed that i hope you had a go i hope you solved it i am absolutely champing at a bit to know what the comments are about this one because this is a stunner um, so please drop a comment in I really enjoy reading them especially when they're kind and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic